Hi, Dr. Yas here. In this video, I want to reaffirm my position, which has developed over the past 30 years, that in more than 99% of cases, the cause of pain is not where the pain is being experienced. This can be strongly, strongly evidenced at the knee. If you have knee region pain, the immediate path that the medical establishment takes is to get an MRI looking for some structural variation at the knee. If one is found at the time of the pain, it is asserted to be the cause of the pain, which leads to treatment associated with structural variations like meniscal tears, arthritis, the fake diagnosis of bone on bone, all this type thing. And ultimately, when all the treatments don't work, you're still left with your pain at the knee, wondering why all the treatment at the knee did not resolve the cause of the pain at the knee. I would like to present the three primary reasons for knee pain, muscular causes, which have accounted for the greater than 98 to 99% of cases of pain at the knee I've treated. I think if you visually um, can understand and experience what's happening inside your skin, I think it makes it much easier for you to appreciate why as I just said, and continue to promote that in more than 99% of cases of pain associated at the knee, the cause is not at the knee. So if we're looking at this first picture, we're noticing that here's the kneecap and you see this is the quad tendon and this is the quadriceps muscle, the front thigh muscle. So what you see is that the kneecap is actually connected to the quadricep front thigh muscle through the quad tendon. Now, the knee joint, let's see if we can get this down here. Uh, page down. Oh, here we go. So we're going to take this page down. We're going to look at the knee joint, and we're going to see that the kneecap actually sits in between these two endpoints of the thigh bone, the femur, which are called condyles. So the space between them is known as the interchondrular groove. When the knee is bent, the kneecap stays in the interchondrular groove and tracks through there. So as the knee is being straightened and bent, the kneecap is tracked through the interchondrular groove. And this is controlled, again, by the quadriceps muscle via the quad tendon. So movement of the kneecap, I'll point to it again, movement of the kneecap through the interchondrular groove while the knee is straightened and bent is achieved via the quadriceps muscle and via uh, through the quad tendon. So literally, because the kneecap is attached to the tibia, the lower leg bone through the patella tendon, that's why as the quadricep pulls on the kneecap, the kneecap being attached to the lower leg bone is what creates the motion of the knee joint, okay? The straightening and bending, all right? So we have the kneecaps tracking as the knee is straightened and bent being achieved by the quadriceps muscle via the quad tendon. Now, I wanted to point out the reason I use this picture of the kneecap is because here is what's presented as arthritic changes uh, maybe a deterioration of the meniscus. And because this is found at the time of the pain, which is occurring around the kneecap, it is asserted that the arthritic change or the degeneration of the meniscus or the fake diagnosis of bone on bone is responsible for the pain around the kneecap. What you should see here is that there is actually two joints that make up the kneecap, knee joint which is the joint between the thigh bone and lower leg bone, and then the joint between the kneecap and the thigh bone. So the joint between the kneecap and the thigh bone is a completely separate joint from the joint between the thigh bone and lower leg bone, as can be seen right here. One joint, two joint. So if there's some structural variation of this joint, it is literally impossible for that structural variation to create pain at this joint, the joint between the kneecap and the thigh bone, which is why every time someone comes to me being treated for pain around the kneecap and they show me an MRI of some structural variation at the joint between the thigh bone and lower leg bone, I simply ignore it. 
because it is clear and irrefutable evidence that any kind of structural variation at one joint cannot create pain at another joint. So right off the bat, we can now go up and look here. And at this picture, we'll see that here's your quads and actually here's your hamstrings. So what we're noticing is that there's a relationship that can develop between quad strength, front thigh strength and hamstring strength. Now, if the quadricep were to become stronger than the hamstring, which is quite common, then it can shorten and in shortening it create an upward force on the kneecap, which as the knee is bent will compress the kneecap in the joint leading to pain around the kneecap. That is the first most common cause of pain around the knee, kneecap and knee joint. Secondly, you might do something and strain your quadriceps muscle. If the quadricep muscle is strained, that upward force that's being used to keep that kneecap in the knee joint is actually decreased enough to where now this can rise and actually start to float to the outer portion, sorry, this way, to the outer portion of the knee joint and can impact this point right here, which is the lateral femoral condyle. So as you bend your knee, the kneecap can get caught here and you can get a snapping sensation. That snapping sensation is because the kneecap has floated due to weak quadriceps muscle and it's now being caught on the knee, uh, the lateral condyle uh, as the knee is being bent. And then as you bend it, it kind of snaps back into place. So that's a possibility. You could have quad weakness. The other possibility is this, the iliotibial band has a tendency to shorten when the gluteus medius muscle, a muscle at the hip region, strains causing a muscle that sits at the iliotibial band, the top of it called the tensor fascia lata, to try to compensate. When that strains, it can cause the iliotibial band to shorten. The iliotibial band is actually attached. This is the fibula head, the outer uh, bone of the lower leg, but it also attaches to the kneecap. So if this is to shorten, this could lead to the kneecap being pulled again laterally to the outside, leading to it catching on the outer condyle, the outer portion of the knee joint where the outer portion of the groove is so the kneecap can catch. So you can cause the kneecap to track to the outside if the ITB band is to shorten. So that's the three primary mechanisms by which you can have a muscular cause create pain around the kneecap. It is completely independent of any structural variation identified at the joint between the thigh bone and lower leg bone, which is what the MRI is providing. Uh, just to give an example of this situation, I had a woman that just came in. She had pain around the kneecap. She had snapping of the kneecap, she felt, as she bent her knee. She had pain just above the outer portion of the thigh as it approached the knee joint. She even had pain at the lateral aspect, outer aspect of the shin. Um, so that was all the places where she had pain and it limited her function. We were able to establish that she had, in fact, strained her quadricep muscle, which led to the kneecap moving to the outside, catching that outer aspect of the, the groove that the kneecap runs through. So that's why it was snapping and painful. Uh, the iliotibial band had strained as well due to a strained glute med, the muscle on the side of the hip, which was responsible for balance. Because that outer muscle strain, the gluteus medius, it caused her to weight bear through the inside of her foot, which was causing her to lose the arch of the foot and her foot was pronating or caving in, which caused the outer portion of the muscle, the muscle that sits on the outer portion, the peroneus muscle, to now shorten and strain. Uh, the other thing that she noted was she could not straighten her knee. So she couldn't straighten her knee. And that was, again, an indication that the quadricep muscle had strained and the muscles in the back of the leg were too strong and they had shortened. So all of those symptoms could be seen as relating to muscular causes. And so when one treatment, we did some massage, some stretch, we did the appropriate exercises. She had full range of motion of her knee. She could fully straighten her knee and she had no pain after one session. And that reinforced the point that the cause was muscular and had nothing to do with any structural variations that may have been identified by an MRI. So 
This is just another one of my videos reinforcing the point that in more than 99% of cases, the cause of pain is not where it's experienced. In this particular case, I can reassure you that in more than 99% of cases, knee pain is not from the knee. The cause is not some structural variation of the knee. If you find this video helpful, please give me a, give it a thumbs up. If you like my YouTube channel, Dr. Mitchell Yas, please subscribe to get notifications when new videos are added. If you want to contact me, you could do so by email at drmitch at mitchellyas.com. If this is making sense and you'd like to obtain a Yas method session, you could do so by going to my website, livewithoutpains, plural, livewithoutpains.com. You have the option of getting an in-person session in Jacksonville, Florida, or a Zoom session. You get to pick the day and time that works best for you. Uh, all you need is a resistance band and a chair, and the sessions are videotaped so that you have that going forward to make sure you're doing what you need so you could ultimately achieve the goal that the YAS method seeks to achieve for all, a pain-free, fully functional life. So for now, this is Dr. Mitchell Yas, wishing you a pain-free, fully functional life. Bye-bye.